Well, a tipping point. Um, I'm not sure what a tipping point is, um, but uh, you know, it's, it's not it's not necessarily clear to say at that point in time we passed the threshold. It's probably very difficult to put your finger on it. But you can probably look, which is what we did um, back in May, at the past 20, 40 years of observation of one sector and say, look, we've gathered enough information in this area, understanding the changes and see what's laying behind, to say this sector is sort of doomed, it's going to keep retreating no matter what the climate does. It might retreat faster if climate warming continues at this pace, it might retreat slower. We, we don't know that absolutely for sure. But the fuse is already blown. Um, the idea is still probably um, uh, a little bit of a shock for some, some people in our community, but uh, I've been looking at this area long enough to, to be quite sure about that. I guess uh, one area, I, so it's kind of a case of we know it's going to happen, we're not sure when. Would that be how you would characterize? Yes. The time scale is the big, is the big issue. Uh, and um, I think the community in general is very conservative with time scales. Um, um, all the observations we've collected in, uh, in the past decades are actually pointing towards shorter time scales than what the models are able to replicate. It's true for CIs, the CIs DK, most of the models are not able to replicate that. Uh, it's true for the decay of, of uh, glaciers and ice sheets. Uh, they're going on a pace faster than what the models projected and faster than even the present day models are able to, uh, to replicate. So a lot of the changes we're witnessing, um, we actually don't have any reference in time to say we know how it happened in the past, we know at what pace these things can retreat. There's no example of that. Uh, all the records of uh, collapse of marine ice sheets have been bulldozed by re-advance of, uh, of the glaciers. So these records don't exist. We know how fast some of the land terminating ice sheets can collapse, and they can collapse pretty fast. So the marine ice sheets, they probably can do it a lot faster. We probably are seeing that today in several parts of Antarctica and Greenland. Um, but it's, uh, it's a little bit shattering to say, hey, this is it, right? Mm. Uh, even for the scientists looking at it, it's kind of a big step to say, I think this place is falling apart. How do we yes. communicate this to the public? I don't know. Uh, but we're not doing a good job at that. Uh, I think most of the scientists are not trained for that. So they're a bit taken by surprise. They don't know how to deal with that very well. I'm trying to learn. I, I talk to people actually from digital media uh, to ask them, how do we reach the people? Uh, you know, the feedback I get right now is you guys uh, really suck at it. You're not doing it right. Uh, I can tell that you're not trained to do this. Uh, the message is not passing. You know, you talk about these things like, oh, you know, business as usual, this glacier is falling apart, West Antarctica is, is going to be in an irreversible state of retreat. And uh, the people who listen to that may not click. They feel like, well, I, it doesn't seem so shattered by this, so why should I worry about it? Right? We should be a little bit more vocal and direct about these things. Uh, uh, you have somehow to take your scientist hat off and take a different hat to communicate that. You cannot communicate to the public the same way you communicate to your, to your colleagues. Um, it has to be a different level of communication.